So in this session, we will start with the topic called dynamic arrays in system Matlab. Uh, I, I have told in yesterday's session that uh, we will discuss for loop and for each loop for accessing and uh, entering the elements into the arrays. So after completing this all array topics, I will explain how to uh, enter the elements and access the elements from the for loop using for uh, uh, into the arrays using for loop and for each loop. Okay. So first we will complete the discussion on this uh, all type of arrays present in system well loop. Then after we will see how to uh, insert the uh, elements into the arrays and uh, access the elements out of this arrays using for loop and for each loop. Okay. So we will start with the discussion of uh, dynamic arrays in system well loop. So before starting the discussion of uh, dynamic arrays in system with log, we need to know two concepts. One is runtime and uh, other is compile time. So we need to know these two uh, concepts, these two terms. So first let's see what is meant by compile time. So compile time refers to the phase in the development process where the source code is translated into the machine code or intermediate code by a compiler. So compiler do, do this. What it will do? Basically, it will uh, convert the source code that is the code which you have written into a machine code, okay, or intermediate code, okay. So the basic job of a compiler. Here, yeah, the basic job of a compiler is to uh, compile the code and convert the source code uh, into the machine code. So it is done during the compile time. So this process is basically done in the compile time. So the compiler will come uh, translate the source code into machine code. And this phase happens before the program is run. The goal of the compile time activities is to check and transform the code so that it is ready for execution. And remember this point also, this phase happens before the program is run, okay? So before the run, uh, the program starts running, the compiler will compile this uh, program, okay? So the goal of the compile time activities is to check and transform the code so that it is ready for execution. And the syntax checking also is done during the compile time itself. Syntax checking whether we have written everything right or wrong, it is also will be checked during this compile time. So in hardware description languages like system Verlog, compile time refers to the stage where the HDL code is converted into a netlist or hardware structure. So during this compile time, the compiler will convert this uh, HDL code into a netlist or hardware structure. Okay. So common compile time errors could include issues like type mismatches or illegal assignments. Okay. So these are the common compile time errors. What are the illegal assignments or type mismatches, etc. For example, uh, the compile time during the compile time, if uh, if we declare uh, any variable of any variable of int data type like this. And if we try to assign any integer to it, it will get assigned. And the compiler, during the compile time, it will know that we have declared an integer and we are trying to uh, assign a value to this, uh, sorry, assign a value to this variable, okay? So basically what the compiler will do during this compile time, it will basically check the syntax and it will convert the source code into the machine code. And yeah and it will convert the HDL code into the netlist or hardware structure and it will check for the type mismatches as well as illegal assignments. So this is the job of the compiler during the compile time. And the compile time is nothing but uh, it is a basic functionality checking or the syntax checking, that's it, okay? There is no execution of operation. Here you can see, uh, yeah. So that it is ready for execution. Here, uh, where is it, common compile time? here this point so this phase happens before the program is run so compile time is happening before the uh, running of the program okay this is very important point before the running of the program the compile uh, time is happening okay is it clear for the compile time is it clear yeah so write it here during the compile time syntax checking is happening and uh, the compiler is checking uh, is checking for the syntaxes as well as it is converting HDL code into netlist 
that is source code is converted into machine language code and syntax checking is happening okay and this is happening before compile time is happening before running the program running or execution of the program running or execution of program okay so this is what happening in compile time now next see about runtime so during runtime runtime is a phase when the compiled program is executed on the computer okay so runtime is a phase when the compiled program is executed so basically what the program uh, the compiler is compiled so the that that program execution happens after the compile time during the runtime okay so runtime is a phase when the compiled program is executed on the computer this is when the program actually performs the task defined by the code such as reading inputs processing data and producing outputs for example this here you can see so not this particular example for example you can see if we have declared two variables of int data type int b and using the initial block if we try to assign the value of a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 begin end okay so basically here the declaration part the compiler this is the the syntax checking will be done at this compile time basically the compile time at the compile time the compiler will check uh, what are all the variables declared whether this is of in data type or which data type they have declared whether they have declared correctly or not all this will be checked uh, by the compiler during the compile time so after compile time uh, the com after the compilation gets successful during the runtime what the com uh, what happens the code starts executing that is uh, the assignments which we have done will will get executed this is during runtime okay so this is the difference between the compile time and runtime here you can see the definition runtime is a phase when the compile program is executed on the computer this is when the program actually performs a task defined by the code such as reading inputs processing data and producing outputs okay so this is about compile time and runtime so is it clear for everyone so if it is clear then we can understand the further concepts so is it clear Can anyone confirm it, whether it is clear or not? Yeah. Now, let's see the compile time behavior of fixed arrays. So, we have discussed our fixed arrays, right? Like packed arrays and unpacked arrays. These arrays are fixed arrays fixed arrays in the sense the size is fixed it cannot be altered once the size is declared once the size is declared it cannot be it cannot be altered or changed okay so this is fixed arrays so our packed arrays and unpacked arrays are the examples of fixed arrays where the size is when the size is declared it cannot be altered so we will discuss about this first part there is and we will come to our uh, main topic that is dynamic arrays. So we have discussed all the syntax everything uh, in the, our previous session about the packed arrays. So in our se in this session what we will see uh, what is the difference between the packed arrays or unpacked arrays and uh, the dynamic arrays that is the fixed arrays and dynamic arrays what is the difference okay. So in the case of fixed arrays what is happening is uh, the size is fixed during the compile time itself. Wait a minute, let me erase this. So in the case of fixed arrays, like packed arrays and unpacked arrays, what is happening is the size of the array is fixed during the compile time itself. During the compile time itself. Okay. During the compile time itself, the size is getting fixed it cannot be altered it cannot be altered during runtime 
I hope now you are aware of what is meant by compile time and runtime. So that's why I first have discussed about the, uh, that compile time and runtime. So in the case of fixed arrays, the size is fixed during the compile time and it cannot be altered during the runtime. For example, if we have taken a uh, array called int static array, static underscore array of size 5. So this is here I have declared an array and within an initial beginning block, let's say suppose if I try to access any location which is not at all present in this static array, let's say I want to access sixth location and I want to give the value 3 to this static array, will it be valid? Is this assignment valid assignment? So there are only total uh, 0 to 5, that is 6 locations, but I, I am trying to assign uh, the value to a seventh location. So is it a valid? No, right? Yeah. So it is not valid. So basically this type of error is called a runtime error. Okay. You will get a runtime error because you are trying to uh, access a location which is not at all declared during the compile time, which is not at all declared during the compile time. So during the compile time, what you have declared only six locations you have declared, right? So the compiler will uh, see that you have declared only six locations and during runtime, you are trying to access the uh, new location that is that location which is not at all declared. So what it will give? It will basically give a runtime error. So basically in the case of fixed arrays, the, the, when when the size is declared, then it is fixed at the compile time itself. Then it cannot be altered during the runtime, and you cannot access the uh, new location other than the locations which we have which we have declared in the code, which we have declared in the compile time. Okay, so this is a case of fixed arrays. Now coming to dynamic arrays. Yeah. So before that, here we will see that. So here the size of a static array is fixed and the memory of file elements is allocated when the program is compiled. Any access beyond the array bounds will result in a compile error if indexing is statically known. Okay, so this is uh, what we have seen now only. Now let's see uh, the runtime behavior of this fixed array only. So during the runtime values are stored and accessed based on the pre-allocated memory. The array size is fixed and the code cannot resize or modify it during the execution. Any attempt to access an invalid index may cause a runtime error. Now only we have discussed it, that only uh, they have written here. Yeah, this example, like uh, we have declared only five locations, but we are trying to access the sixth location, then we will get a runtime error, array index out of bounds. Okay, so this is the case of fixed arrays. I hope uh, this is clear, right? Yeah. Next. Coming to compile time behaviors of dynamic arrays. Now let's uh, start the discussion of dynamic arrays. What are these dynamic arrays? So basically, uh, in case of fixed arrays, we know that we are going to uh, declare the size during the compile time, right? But in the case of dynamic arrays, there is no need to declare the size in the compiled. There is no need to declare the size during the compiled. Time. The size is declared during the runtime itself. Okay. The size is the size of the dynamic array is declared during the runtime itself. There is no need to declare the size of the array during the compiled time. The size is declared during the runtime itself. So in remember this. So in dynamic arrays, the size is not declared during the compile time like fixed arrays. The size is given during the runtime itself. Okay, instead of giving the width of the array or the size of the array during the compile time, the size is allocated, uh, uh, the size of the dynamic array is allocated during the runtime itself. Okay, so the dynamic arrays do not have a fixed size at the compile time. So this size is not known or set during the compilation and no memory is allocated for the array at this stage, okay? So there are few important keywords here. So the dynamic arrays do not have a fixed size. So this is the one important keyword. So dynamic arrays do not have any fixed size 
at compile time. So during compile time, dynamic arrays do not have any fixed size, and this size is not known. Okay, we we also don't know the size of the dynamic array or set during the compilation, and no memory. So there will be no memory allocation for this array at this stage. Which stage? Compile time stage. Okay. So during compile time stage, the size is not fixed and no memory is allocated. And yeah, so is this clear? Is this clear? Can we move forward? Yeah. Now let's see the uh, syntax for dynamic array. So the syntax for dynamic array is data type followed by array name followed by array name followed by empty square braces. So this is the syntax for dynamic array, Di uh, data type, uh, array name as well as uh, square brackets. Okay. So here you can observe. So this is a dynamic array declaration. So you, you're not giving any size of the array at the compile stage. Okay. Unlike your uh, fixed size arrays where you, where you are giving a size at the compile time, in case of dynamic arrays, you're not allocating the size of this dynamic array. Okay. You're just simply leaving the brackets empty. Okay. So uh, here you can observe int, uh, here the data type, they have uh, took in data type followed by the array name, which is dynamic array followed by empty brace, empty brackets, square brackets. So the dynamic array, no size is specified. Okay. So this is during the compile time. During the compile time, the, we have just declared a dynamic array. That's it. So here at the compile time, the array is simply declared, but no memory is allocated yet. The compiler just ensures that the syntax is correct, but defers memory uh, allocation until runtime. Okay. We'll see that. Next. So this is about uh, compile time in the dynamic arrays. So sorry, dynamic arrays during the compile time. Next, runtime behavior of the dynamic arrays. What happens is, so during the runtime, let's say suppose we have declared a dynamic array int dynamic underscore array with square braces. This is all inside a module. Okay. So within an initial beginning block. Now, if you want to uh, allocate a memory, so in the definition we have seen, right, I have marked some keywords. There is no memory. So during the compile time, just we have declared the array, but there is no memory. Okay. So we need to create a memory, right? So how to create a memory? It is created with the help of the keyword new. Okay, dynamic array is equal to new of and you will give any number, the size, let's say 10. So a dynamic array will be created during the runtime with 10 memory locations like this. So on 10. Okay, so there will be 10 locations created with the name dynamic array during the runtime itself. This is not happening during the compile time. This is happening during the execution phase only runtime itself. We are uh, allocating the memory. Next, we will uh, assign the values into this dynamic array. Let's say dynamic array of zero is equal to one and dynamic array of two is equal to two. Like this, you will assign some values into this dynamic array. Okay, is it clear? This is clear, right? Can we move forward? Yeah. So basically, uh, this was our sessions discussion. So we have started with uh, compile time and uh, runtime in system gridlock, where we have seen what is meant by 
compile time and what is meant by runtime and we have seen the difference uh, of the compile time in the case of uh, fixed arrays and what happens during the runtime in the case of fixed arrays and we have came to the uh, compile time behavior of uh, dynamic arrays what is happening of uh, what is happening in the case of dynamic arrays during compile time and what is happening what we will do in the case of runtime so this is how and we have uh, started with the dynamic arrays what is mean by dynamic arrays and we have seen the syntax for this dynamic arrays and we have seen how to allocate the memory for this dynamic arrays so in our next session we will see some more uh, uh, in detail about this dynamic arrays and uh, yeah so that's all for this session so if you are having any doubts or queries you can stay and ask me or else we can end the session thank you